It's Friday the 15th of May. This is episode 2019 of 301 Permanently Moved Online, a personal podcast, usually 301 seconds in length, written, recorded and edited in one hour by me at the JMO. Having put out an hour-long show last week, for the first time in two years I'm making an exception on 301's 5 minute and 1 second length constraint this week, I want to push the walls out a little, as it were. I, seemingly like the rest of the internet, want to talk about Animal Crossing. But first, an update. I spent last week wiping, archiving and installing a clean OS on my laptop. I've finally set up my Notion.so workspace and I've populated it with a lot of near-term projects that I want to finish or complete. And, for the first time since 2005, I've inboxed zero to my Gmail. Feels good. One of the things that I've come to appreciate more deeply this week is that my laptop is a place. A psychic place, in some sense. A room in my life that I portal into every time I open a laptop lid. A cyber place, in cyberspace, as it were. When I consult on ops design with startups, I talk about techno-social systems a lot. And most recently here, on episode 2004, make no distinction. I've come to the conclusion this week that not keeping your digital workspace tidy is the equivalent of leaving clothes on the floor or not doing your laundry. Eventually, it all piles up. Your hard drive is a reflection of you. Last week, my cyber place had gotten so bad that I ended up going a bit Bradley Cooper in Limitless. Home. But it couldn't be my home, could it? Who would live like this? My first thought? Torture. There was a great article on Chargeblog last year called Fortnite Isn't a Game, It's a Place, inspired by a tweet by Anup Ranganath from 2018. Fortnite isn't just a virtual world with rules and a shared objective. Its built-in voice chat transforms the game into a place to hang out with your friends. Kids playing Fortnite for hours and on end hanging out are no different from other kids sitting around a table playing cards, chatting about their day. The kitchen is the place, the cards provide the social excuse. Spaces like Fortnite, Minecraft, WoW and Animal Crossing are all successful because they all share something in common. They allow the community to develop or have built in constructed grammars for interaction. Web 2.0 networks like Twitter fail at any kind of civility because they were pioneers focused on the development of the mechanics of the network, not the grammars, manners and mores that go along with acting in a virtual space. Successful virtual worlds share a kind of performativity that help with the manners and grammars of the online space. I'm my little dude in Animal Crossing, or a mage in WoW. I approach Twitter the same way, to make it tolerable. I'm at the JMO on Twitter, not JSpringit. Animal Crossing's New Horizons, as a game, is just more Animal Crossing. But Nintendo's inclusion, and perhaps building the game around thoughtful social elements, i.e. visiting other people's islands, have been a game changer for the franchise. When you're in the game, visiting a friend or a stranger, you act like an Animal Crossing dude, You help water the plants, ask politely to pick someone's fruit, and you emote. These behaviours come naturally because after about an hour with the game, you are fully up to speed with the grammars of the toy box and the manners and mores of that virtual world. You act like an Animal Crossing resident when you play the game. A player's island is a complete representation of what can be done and has been done creatively with the same toy box everyone is given. A five-star island, for example, represents hundreds of hours of gameplay. Over that time, the player expresses themselves creatively when the constraints of the game. So what one's Animal Crossing island is, in totality, is a question of aesthetics, or rather, a demonstration of taste. Back in 2012, Nathan Jurgensen, now resident sociologist at Snapchat and author of The Social Photo, wrote about a hot new social network called Pinterest for the new inquiry, where he argued the following. What we pin, post and like allows us to demonstrate our refined tastes, to declare publicly what we deem picturesque, and that identity is not performed through a transparent window, but through the logic of mediated and curated imagery. In the case of Animal Crossing, one curates virtual objects obtained through Timmy and Tommy Nook's shop. We will set aside the consumerist parallels with Pinterest for now and continue with our aesthetic considerations. Jurgensen concluded, On Pinterest, we do not collectively fail at creating a real self as we do on Facebook. Perfectly curated Pinterest pinboards make no claim to represent the full complexities of reality or self-identity. The toy box world of Animal Crossing allows for something similar. 
In game, the placement of every curated item, every hill, river, or tree is a demonstration of someone's taste. I use taste here not in the sense of 19th century aesthetic philosophy, but instead reach further back towards the Middle Ages, where calling an object honest is a reflection of taste. An honest object is one that an honourable person would consider to be beautiful. A five-star island is the result of a player acting in their capacity as Nook Incorporated's resident representative, expressing their self-identity through the arrangement of virtual objects spatially. In my opinion, any sign of a virtual world's success is the ability to transcend its own boundaries and generate transmedia on other platforms. Twitter has its feedback loops with the news cycle. Minecraft, popularised online streaming, EVE Online has its corporate and stock market reportage, and in case it has escaped your notice, Animal Crossing media is currently everywhere. One of my favourite things to have sprung up around Animal Crossing are the five-star island visit videos. At their best, they are a cross between grand designs, the opening segments of Queer Eye where they walk around their victims' apartments and critique the clothes on the bedroom floor, through the keyhole, and travel videos. There's a lot of innovation compressed into the format for sure. Check out this clip from Tagback TV. As you listen, picture a cute little dude dressed in a top hat and tails with a moustache and monocle touring an island as a guest, like some sort of island inspector. Oh, we've got ourselves a restaurant with um, blue plates for the diner set. That looks really nice, actually. We got the uh, hostess stand here, another espresso machine. We've got some foodstuffs here, place to wash the dishes, and uh, something in the, the crock pot there. Very nice. I like seeing the restaurants. I've been trying to build more stuff like that on my island. Do we have something on the beach here? Oh, we do. It's beautiful. Having this nice beach restaurant area, such a good idea. You can hear in the clip Tagback TV's appreciation of the host's taste as demonstrated within the constraints of the toy box that is Animal Crossing. You can also hear the positive and polite informal manners and mores of the game that have been internalized by players from the NPCs in their demeanor and performance of the voiceover. There's also an emerging gift exchange custom, a reciprocal take one, leave one area at island entrances when you get off the plane. Another piece of transmedia I think you should know about is Animal Talking, hosted by Rogue One screenwriter and former editor-in-chief of PC Gamer magazine, Gary Witter. The setup is very simple. Gary, as his little dude, sits behind a desk with a coffee cup on it, wearing a snappy suit and tie in a room arranged like a US late night talk show. There's a couch for the guests, Windows in the background that look out over a nighttime cityscape. There's plants, a TV camera, a rug, and his co-host, at Nickavision, sits at a set of drums, with instruments and amps as set decoration in the background. I know you can picture it, because it's basically every late night talk show ever. Animal Talking, of course, is set in Animal Crossing. Audio is recorded presumably by some third-party app, as Nintendo quite rightly didn't include that feature natively. The host and the guests converse on Skype or whatever and control their characters in game. Here's a clip from rapper T Pain on the show from the other day talking about his island. I don't want anything for this. I'm not here to promote anything. I actually want to do this. What's going on over there on T Pain's island right now? I will tell you what's going on real quick. Hold on one second, okay? Okay, so let me tell you about my life. <laughs> Let me tell you about my life. The show is constantly evolving and growing. Last night, regular Twitter user at Directed Brianne was a guest on the couch alongside actors Elijah Wood and Danny Trejo. In this clip, Directed Brianne leverages the implicit grammars of the game and gets up off the couch and starts to spin around. A couple of weeks ago, she was just a regular person living her life on Twitter, trying to make trying to make a living selling you know turnips. And now she's sitting on a couch on in the, as, as according to The Verge, the hottest talk show of 2020. In between Danny Trejo and Elijah Wood. I mean, what 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 a moment! <laughs> I do a spin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's so excited. She's so excited. She can't get enough of it. Um, I do want to. I do want to bring on our next guest. Oh my God! Everyone. <laughs> you know what? Why not? Awesome. We have moved very far away from aesthetics at this point, but let me explain. I listen to a lot of podcasts and consume a lot of web media. I estimated the other week on Twitter that at this point, around two thirds of the media I consume online, from newsletters, blogs, YouTube, podcasts, to books, etc., are made or produced by people that I know in real life. Much of it I pay for. Gary Witter's Animal Talking is the convergence of a podcast, real-time animation, and late-night talk show all wrapped up in the aesthetics and constraints of the Animal Crossing toy box. The grammars and manners internalised by the players in the game have all come along with it. 
Animal Talking is vastly superior to any of the quote-unquote real late-night talk shows happening under the extra-normal lockdown conditions right now. There's no grainy self-shot webcam footage, no jokes falling flat without the audience to signal that something was supposed to be funny. In my opinion, many big names have been struggling to keep the attention of their audience as the lockdown has gone on. YouTubers have more appealing grammars like the fast cut editing taken from MTV visual literacy than supercharged by vlogging culture. Late night talk show hosts or celebrities working from home used to traditional TV are floundering in their attempts to master the affordances of the changed media landscape. Why watch a traditional celebrity talking to a webcam when you could watch something made by Elle Mills instead? Just because a clip taken from the main TV show does well on YouTube doesn't mean that the whole show will translate mediums. The clips from the first lockdown episode of BBC's Have I Got News For You was one of the cringiest things I've ever seen. Why did no one tell them, day one of lockdown, that they could use a DSLR as a webcam and record crisper audio straight to their phones with a headset plug? in. It boggles my mind. Anyways, I've digressed. Animal Talking works so spectacularly well by wearing its influences on its sleeve. It's not traditional late night media dislocated to a new platform. The extra normal condition of the show is that it's taking place in Animal Crossing. I'm sure we've all evolved our own grammars and manners whilst participating in virtual worlds such as house party or Zoom calls that are unique to our own social groups. Animal Talking also takes place in a virtual world that everyone understands the grammar and the manners of, including the audience that's watching. Mark Geffen recently wrote in his newsletter, Vivid and Vague, on the minimum viable metaverse, a concept that has its roots in cyberpunk and most memorably Neil Stevenson's Snow Crash. We are starting to pick up strong signals about how entertainment, work, school and common models of social interaction will change. He presents a Venn diagram of virtual worlds, premium social media like Twitch subscriptions, decentralised and remote technologies like Bitcoin and Zoom, and the quiet democratisation of e-commerce that has been going on in the last few years. In the newsletter, Geffen suggests that video games will guide the way, spatial software is coming soon, and virtual worlds will continue to explode as IRL continues to lose its monopoly on normalcy as the lockdown continues. It's a very good essay that draws many interesting conclusions that I also agree with. I'm excited to see what comes out of the Animal Crossing toy box in future. It's an interesting time, and I haven't even brought up the Wild West that is VR chat. If you want more from me on virtual worlds, their grammars, and the demonstration of taste, please do check out episode 2003 on mixtapes and landscapes, or check out episode 1919 from last year where I attempted to explain Fortnite for boomers. Links to all the articles and episodes mentioned are in the show notes. As always, you can follow me online almost everywhere as at the JMO and subscribe to my blog at www.thejmo.net slash blog. Regular 301 transmissions will continue again from next week.